Here is a high-level overview of the whole Trinity assembly algorithm. We call it Trinity because it involves three major steps that we've built into three separate software modules. It starts with Inchworm, which first assembles the RNA-seq data into linear contigs. Then Crystal's groups contigs that are related due to alternative splicing or gene duplication and constructs de Bruijn graphs. Finally, Butterfly examines reads in the context of the de Bruijn graphs and reports final full-length transcripts and isoforms of transcripts. The Inchworm algorithm works as follows. It first decomposes reads into a catalog of overlapping k-mers. By default, we use overlapping 25 mers. This is similar to the first step of generating a de Bruijn graph, but we don't actually build a de Bruijn graph. We just store the k-mers and their frequency in all the reads, and don't actually store the edges between the k-mers. And this is done mainly to save on the amount of memory and computation that's required. The single most abundant k-mer with reasonable sequence complexity is identified as a seed kamer. This seed kamer is then extended on a three prime end guided by the coverage of overlapping kamers. For each extension there are four possible kamers, each ending with one of the four possible nucleotides. Each of the possible overlapping kamers is looked up in the kamer catalog to determine their frequency within the reads. In this toy example the kamer ending with G is found four times. A is found once. The camera ending with T doesn't actually exist in the reads, so it's given a count of zero. And the camera ending with C is found four times. In this case, we have a tie. When we encounter a tie, we explore the tied paths recursively to find that extension that provides the highest cumulative coverage. In this case, the extension of two overlapping cameras ending with an A provides the highest cumulative coverage and so the other paths are ignored. Extensions continue to occur this way until there are no more k-mers that provide for an extension. Then we extend from right to left in the same manner, following the path of greatest coverage. Once the extension completes, the assembled contig is reported. The k-mers found in this contig are removed from the k-mer catalog, and the entire process is repeated starting from a new seed. The inchworm assembly ends when the entire camer ca catalog has been depleted. Inchworm alone performs well at reconstructing full-length transcripts, but in the case of alternative splicing, inchworm alone is unable to reconstruct full-length transcripts for each of the isoforms. This is because it assembles contigs from unique camers, and the sequences shared between isoforms can be reported in only one inchworm contig. For example, here are two expressed isoforms which share the orange and green sequence regions in common, and isoform A has a stretch of unique sequence shown in yellow, such as coming from an exon skipped in isoform B. This can be represented graphically like so. Based on the read support, we find that isoform B is highly expressed as compared to isoform A, and we indicate that in the graph by a thicker edge. When inchworm greedily assembles camers, it will often report the, mo the more highly expressed isoform as a single full-length contig. And only the unique regions of alternatively spliced isoforms are reported as separate contigs. Again, these contigs share no camers in common. The remaining components of Trinity are responsible for linking these related contigs together and reporting more complete sequences for each. This is where Chrysalis comes in. Although these inchworm contigs lack complete camers in common, they maintain partial camer overlap at points where the isoforms diverge. The smaller contig can still be associated with a larger contig based on these partial camers of length k minus 1, and we can find reads to support the junction. The Chrysalis tool, in the next step, exploits these partial camers to regroup related contigs. If reads exist that support the junction at the k minus 1 overlaps, and chrysalis will cluster the inchworm contigs together. Here's a high-level overview of the chrysalis operations. Chrysalis clusters related contigs based on these k minus 1 mer overlaps. Chrysalis also leverages read pairing information to join minimally overlapping contigs. After identifying the connected inchworm contigs, it then constructs a separate de Bruijn graph for each group. Again, the de Bruijn graph represents the overlaps between adjacent k-mers and the sequences with branches 
at sites of variation. And this is how we end up with many separate graphs, ideally one graph per gene, with each graph representing the transcriptional complexity at that locus. These graphs can then be processed in a parallel fashion by the next step of Trinity involving butterfly. Butterfly operates on each of these graphs independently. It first compacts the de Bruijn graph by collapsing the unbranched, stretch, the unbranched stretches as described earlier. It then threads the original sequencing reads into the graph, tracking the path occupied by the reads and those paths supported by mate pairs. Butterfly then reports the most probable paths through the graph supported by the reads and the read pairings, emitting full-length transcripts for isoforms and paralogs. Here's a real example to demonstrate how this works in practice. In our mouse RNA-seq dataset, we find a compacted de Bruijn graph that has three nodes. By traversing the path from the top blue node to the bottom green node, we generate a single transcript sequence. By traversing the alternative path through the red node, we generate another transcript sequence. The second transcript shares the blue and green segments, but contains an additional internal red segment. For mapping the transcripts to the reference genome sequence, we can see that the inserted sequence actually corresponds to a cassette exon that is alternatively spliced, and novel given that it wasn't found in the reference transcript structure. Some transcript graphs are far more complex. Here we have an example of two such transcripts derived from paralogous genes that became intertwined in the compacted graph due to stretches of sequence identity among segments of the transcripts. Shared sequences are represented by the central sequence nodes, and paralog specific sequences are represented by the branch nodes. By tracing consistent paths of reads through, through the graph, Butterfly is able to tease apart the paralogs and report the individual transcripts. In this case, the green path yields one of the transcripts and the red path yields the other. These transcripts, when mapped to the mouse genome, match perfectly with the reference gene structures. Here the reference structures are shown in blue and the Trinity reconstructed transcripts are shown below.